Hey folks, today in this episode, we're gonna take a look at uh, Nano and talk about some generative art uh, with Rust. So this is a Rust library that's useful for, for generating art. Um, so in the background here, you can see this, this example that I did some basic modifications on, but it's quickly allowed me to get up and start manipulating um, some really beautiful visuals here in the terminal. So stick around. We're going to take a look at a generative art library in Rust. Okay, so uh, just a quick shout out to the generative uh, subreddit community here on Reddit. Uh, There's just some really beautiful stuff that folks are posting all of the time. Uh, by the way, apologies if that pre prior introduction version of the video was uh, was choppy. I think that generative art nano library was was taking up a lot of my ram and on this laptop uh i i guess i don't have enough um so this this is one this is a just a, a beautiful piece um that is pretty incredible uh from a reddit thread uh which uh is due to this person recursive reality uh who explained they did not use the Nanu library, I believe they used uh, processing, which is more of a JavaScript uh, framework, which is also um, a different way for for using generative art. But uh, but we are here with uh, with Rust, and so this is the Nano guide, uh, and so if you go to GitHub, you can find that. Um, that repository uh, it's not that <clears throat> what's nice is this is still a very young uh, repo uh, and we'll have a bunch of issues that you could work on as, as a person who might want to dive into rust uh, so they have 99 issues <laughs> 99 issues uh, and there's just a bunch of things that you could do. But why don't we go through and interestingly, so it is very active, act, actively being worked upon. Um, you can see here all of the examples, some of which we'll, we'll go through here. So uh, check out the, the repository there. Uh, so I've gotten the documentation open and basically they start out going through how to install Rust um, at this point, I'm going to assume everybody has installed Rust. Uh, you're going to need to um, get uh, clone the repository, get clone right here, running examples. It's a great way to get up to speed. Uh, CD into the directory, and then uh, it will take a while to compile. So that just that's just uh, an aspect of Rust, working with libraries in Rust that for now is something you're going to have to sort of learn to live with that um, compiling rust libraries takes takes just a little bit of time but then once it's compiled you know if it does compile high, de high degree chance of certainty that your program is going to run okay so once it's compiled uh, basically cargo run uh, dash dash release uh, the release flag means we want to build with the optimizations enabled uh, and then example simple simple draw so there are a bunch of examples let's just run with this one at the moment simple draw okay so this has an interactive aspect of it as you can see uh, pretty neat uh, and you can explore the examples here. So just uh, VI examples. I'm going to go simple draw. Okay, so uh, pretty simple program, right? So you have uh, pulling in uh, Nanu and some of the, the library init um, initializations. Uh, I, I suppose every you have your main function was which is going to sketch the view so here is the view right so you have clear the background to blue um, and 
you know, basically corn flower blue. So why don't we just say that's green. You can really quickly just start messing with these things. You have different colors that you can change. Um, and I'm not, I don't know that these colors exist. I assume green and black exist. Draw an ellipsis to follow the mouse. So that's interesting. Look how easy this is. X, Y, at mouse, X dot T, cos. I imagine I could change that to a sine wave. The radius, I could change this to cosine. I could change the color from red to violet. I saw draw a line. So here you have rounded caps, paleo, pale golden rod. Interesting. I'm going to change that to red. Right. So just manipulating some things. Draw a quad that follows the inverse of the ellipse. So a lot of pretty basic stuff. Draw a rectangle with with these colors and then add it to a frame and that's it. So if I quit and then run that, yeah, uh, I'm not sure what I'll get, but um, it should, it should work, right? <clears throat> While that's doing its thing, you could see all of these basic examples and then very quickly you're up to speed already uh, and then this tutorial will go through and talk about how to create this project uh, so okay so now see these are my changes and actually that functionality is different here and you can just see it's very easy to get something manipulated and working here. Um, and then they have the basics. So let's check out other examples. So in this examples, they have all of these. Um, actually, what's that multi-window? That looks interesting. I haven't tried that one yet. Let's see how that works. Right, so under examples, there's generative design. That is kind of interesting. I want to take a look in there um, next after this multi window. Uh, but basically, a very easy way to get up and running with nano. All right, so what is this multi draw? Oh, okay, I see. B, A, B, C. So I, now I have three windows that populated. This is interesting. So you have. Windows A, Windows B, and Windows C. I'm not sure they're going to do anything. These are basic examples, so I doubt that they do. Um, so it looks like there was a, <clears throat> a signal to kill those windows, but you could see that all of the data that was being collected and, and shared in my terminal, terminal from just playing around with those windows, uh, resizing them, etc. So let's take a look at that. There's a generative design folder. All right, so generative design, random and noise. Okay. So my curiosity is going to get the best of me here. So examples, generative design. Um, Let's just see if I can call it this way. M1201. <clears throat> so that's under examples, generative design, random and noise. Let's see what we find. And then we'll take a look at that code. Okay, so interesting. This is following my mouse patterns. There is a perfect circle and then the noise increases. What's interesting to me is I'd like to see this with Wasm uh, WebAssembly. Um, this would be a neat little trick to do in the browser and actually resize and kill that. So plenty of things to do here. Uh, let's take a look at that code inside of that example. Examples, 
generative design, random and noise, M12. <clears throat> you can see the license at the top, order versus random. Mouse position X fade between random and circle shape. Interesting. And then S to save. So just going through this, I'm no Rust expert myself, but you can see you get appreciation for what's going on here. And this program really isn't that large. That's it. I've already gotten to the end of it. Uh, so if you're interested in Rust, if you're interested in programming, if you're interested in art, uh, check out the subreddit generative design. Check out Nanu. Um, easy to play around with, easy to get moving. I don't know uh, the level of difficulty for something like processing or the JavaScript library to get them moving. Uh, but this, after you compiled it, very easy to, to get up and running and start manipulating uh, some of these scripts. So uh, take a look at the beginning of this video. Um, I have manipulated uh, the example loop. So the original example uh, loop was more of a black and white and I did uh, I changed loop uh, changed the colors on the example going in uh, so so that it resulted in cargo run release example loop 2 just in case you're curious about which example generated um, this result so Check it out, like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Um, for those of you watching, I'm thinking about developing a game not in Rust. Uh, I've had some some um, prior videos about game de development in Rust. Uh, the ecosystem right now, in my opinion, isn't developed enough to to let someone just run with it. But I would, but I do want to develop a 2D RPG sort of farming game. So if that would be interesting to you, let me know. Uh, it's it's sort of outside the boundaries of what I would normally do, Rust and Python. Um, so I might set up something different, but uh, if you leave a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Have a good night, folks.